gentlemen, let's go racing here at Knoxville. Only the best go three of It is showtime at Williams Grove Speedway. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here at Eldora Speedway, it's showtime. Off the best you've got for a rip. Often imitated, never duplicated, the greatest show on dirt, the world. It's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy, because ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime! Set to do battle for 30 laps, the green flag is waving! Hello again, it is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week, which means this is our favorite time of the year so far. <laughs> we are so glad you joined us here. Steve Post joined by my co-host, Aaron Evernam. Aaron, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Fantastic. Um, where do we even begin? I, um, I don't even know. No. I was kind of curious how this was going to go. Yeah, today. no, I mean, <laughs> um, a lot going on. We're, we're, we, we have Justin Fiedler and Brad Doty. So they can, they fill, can us fill us all in on what's going on. Um, obviously, a lot going on. I want to, I want to right at the top, they'll kind of start off with, with Wing Nation 2024. Um, and, it, and it does tie in to it does tie in to all of the angst and anxiety and drama that's going on. Um, I've never been happier that we're not doing shows than I was during this off season. Me too, one hundred percent. I mean, just sitting back and watching and listening, and it's like, I, I, let's just sit back and watch yeah. because we are focused on. Talking to racers. Yeah. And, race and I'm going to be fully transparent and say, tell you that I backed away from even looking at social media about sprint car racing for a while. It was giving me, I felt like I still had a dog in the fight and I was like getting anxiety over. I'm like, oh, okay, this doesn't really apply to my life. Yes, I do wing nation, right. but I just need to take a step back because there was so much angst. There's so many rumors. There was who's going where. I was like, you know what? I don't, I don't need to know. I, it'll all shake out. Yeah. We don't need to know until February 5th. Yeah. Or 6th or whatever yeah, And we'll is. see how it, yes, we'll see how exactly. it plays out. It's not going to actually right. affect my daily life. So right. how about I just not exactly. pay so close attention? So, so that's kind of, I, I was kind of the same way. I, I would touch base. I, I, I listened to Justin Fiedler every, every day. I listened to his show every day and that kind of caught me up to speed, but I didn't get into the soup. Yeah. I didn't get Oof. into the weeds. Um, and it's going to be, it's going to be fascinating. It all plays out soon, but wing nation 2024, this is where we're at with it. And I know a lot of you follow along here. A lot of you have watched our shows on MAV TV. Uh, we will not be on MAV TV. Uh, at, what we're going to do is this show will be co hosted by three of us Aaron, Ashley, and myself. That way you've got some things in your life that are going to take you away <laughs> on Tuesdays. Ashley and I'll do the yeah. show. I have some things in my life that'll take me away. Like next week, you and Ashley yeah. will do the show. Uh, there might be times we just dial up Ashley and the three of us just sit and talk. Yep. Um, so, and it's all going to be here, wingnation.com, all of the podcast forums, Facebook, and YouTube. We're going to be all here. We are going to add some conversation, long-form conversation pieces. We are in transition in the mothership, MRN. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we are in our studio that we've been in for years and years. Down the road a half a mile, there are brand new shiny studios that we will ultimately move to, and there are brand new shiny podcast studios where we can have screens and sit down face-to-face -face with people and have conversations via Zoom or whatever the technology is. So we are going to have some conversations once we kind of get rolling into the season. And then uh, the final element of it is my schedule is going to be a little bit more aggressive going to sprint car races. And I've got some little snippets, three, four minute pieces that I'm going to do when I'm at sprint car yep. races. And those will all be on YouTube as well. So follow us on YouTube is probably the biggest and best way to yep. do it. If you're an audio person, follow us on all of the audio streaming platforms. We will, we will be here. We'll be breaking it all down. We'll be having a blast. So um, really, really fun stuff. Great stuff. So, um, so that's where we're at with Wing Nation. Get that out of the way. <laughs> exactly. So. Um, what an off season of drama. Mm -hmm. And I'm with you. This is going to play out. Yeah. I, 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 I went from, I went from scared to death for the sport to not caring to this way, to that way yeah. and everywhere in between. And I've settled in where stand back. Yeah. There's nothing any of us are going to do except for watch this. Yep. 
And when a driver wins a big race, we're going to dial them up and talk yeah. about winning that big you know, race. A perfect example is yesterday. I was like, you know what? I need to, I need to do some sprint yeah. car research. Wing Nation's coming back on the air tomorrow. So I'm scrolling through X or Twitter, whatever we call it these days. And I see this whole announcement about the fan experience yeah. at the high limits races. And I start reading and I'm like, why don't we just see and wait how it goes? Like, like all these, it was like yeah. so negative. I'm like, this is why I haven't paid attention. Exactly. This is why. This thing. I'm not going to, yeah. High limits is doing a fan fest yeah. in between qualifying and the heat race. You would have swore to some people. You yeah. would have swore to some people. You told them the meteor they, was going to strike. Right, exactly. And that they walked into their house and robbed them while the meteor was striking. <laughs> I mean, it was just like, whoa, 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 ta- time yeah. out. Do I think it sounds chaotic? 100%. Yes. Do I think that Kyle Larson and Brad Sweet probably thought this out? Of course. Of course. They, so, yeah, let's see. Kyle and Brad have a little experience in the pits. Yeah, a little bit. Mike Hess, who's the overall guy that yeah. runs the, he has a little experience with this. Kendra kind of knows a little yeah. bit what she's doing. Yeah. This, so let's see. Let's stay tuned. But it was, I'm it was you, like the, the perfect. Ago, yeah, it was a perfect re- example of like this is why I stopped paying yeah, attention. The so reaction quickly. yesterday to the fan fest is like, <laughs> what in the wide world of sports are we doing? Th- this thing in so many instances was DOA. Uh, We're yeah. gonna find out what it is. Yeah. This might be the greatest thing on the planet. Might not, but at least they're trying it. Yes, absolutely. So I- exactly. That's what it yeah. is. So it was just a perfect example. Yeah, it was, and a, it I, was I, a perfect yeah. example of it. Exactly. So we'll see what happens. Um both series are loaded. Yeah. Everybody, we're, we're going to have some big races. There's a lot yeah, of money. And we're actually going to get to see them all race together a lot because yes. they're going to be coming to a lot of World of Outlaw races. Yes, because there's a lot of money in the World yeah. of Outlaws. There's a lot of money in high limits. And, and, and then here's, here's the other thing. We, early on in this thing, said there's going to be 10 to 15 drivers choose one side, 10 to 15 drivers choose another side. There's 30 drivers. Okay? Yeah. In 410 sprint car racing, there's probably 250 drivers, 300 drivers. There's plenty for us to talk to. Yeah. Plenty for us to yep. talk about. Uh, Central Pennsylvania is going to be nuts as usual. Yep. Uh, the Midwest is going to be wild. California is through the roof. And the reality of it is, is there's going to be plenty to talk about. And if you want someone to get in the soup and in the mess of it, don't plan on us doing yeah. that. We're just going to, we're going to watch. We're going to laugh. We're going to smile. We're going to, if it doesn't go well, we're going to cry. We're going to do whatever we're going to do. <laughs> we are here and we'll see what happens. Now, a um, couple of big off season things. Okay. Uh, kudos to, I, I love uh, Logan CV won the chili bowl, Kevin yeah. and Jordan Swindell. I think that's cool. Okay. So I'm sitting at home though. Okay. I need to do a little backstory here. A little backstory. I have proclaimed for years and years that I don't own a television, okay? Over the holidays, my daughter, who's now in India, so I've acquired this, brought a TV downstairs into our living room. Uh, And I debated it, okay? Well, then I'm, like, watching some football games. I'm like, yeah, this isn't too bad, you know? (laughs) Then we get into January, and it's like... Well, this time of year, too. Yes, exactly. No doubt. Dark oh, no at, doubt. like, that 5 thing o'clock. Will sit, that yeah. thing will sit idle for months during yeah. the summer, okay? I'm not, I'm not saying that. But then, so I wake up one Saturday morning or Sunday morning, and our buddy TJ, okay, yep. TJ Slideways, I go on Twitter or X or whatever it is, and he says, well, they're racing getting ready to go green on flow. And I'm like, and I had added flow and dirt vision to my TV downstairs, my smart television. So I'm like, Whoa, this is cool. <laughs> and and this actually plays into the this actually plays into the world of all high limits because I wasn't watching either or drama. I was watching sprint cars on the racetrack. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I like watching these cars going on the yeah, racetrack. Yeah, turns out I actually don't turns need out, the drama. I just like the racing. I don't like the drama. I like the racing. So TJ, my man, got me on this kick where I actually got to watch racing, including the Grand Annual yeah. Sprint Car Classic. And Aaron Reitzel picked up the win in that. But it was a... Uh, Aaron, this thing was was almost like life changing because it 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 got me into I love watching sprint yeah. cars go around the racetrack and I do care that this thing succeeds, but I don't really care who goes where. Yep. As long as it's good for sprint car racing and that grand annual sprint car classic was outstanding. Yeah, it was. And I got to hear Wade Onger. I mean, <laughs> you want to talk about bonus. So literally for the Grand Annual Sprint Car Classic, and those of you watching the video, there's goes Sheldon up oh. into the fence. That was a mess. Okay. If you're watching the video, if you're listening on audio, sorry, we're talking about something that's playing here. But um, literally like when I knew the Grand Annual Sprint Car Classic that morning, I mean, literally got up. I'm lit. Yeah. I mean, I did the full-blown breakfast, and I sat there, and I 
Love it. That's awesome. I thought it was great. It is the first time I've ever gotten into Australian sprint car racing. It is. It was just phenomenal. Yeah. The whole thing was great. And and then to see Aaron Reitzel pick up the yeah. win. So kudos to Aaron and everybody. It was it was neat because he's been going over with that team for the last three or four years. And doesn't it sounds like they were all right. Then they were good. And then they were great this year. Yeah. So really, really good stuff. So kudos there. So uh, stateside, well, of course. If there's days on the calendar, Pete Walton is hosting races. Obviously. And they are five races into the USCS schedule already. <laughs> Ryan Timms has two wins, including that $10,000 uh, Southern Sprint Car Shootout at Volusia. I, I love that weekend. Yeah. That was really cool. Uh, other winners, Sam Hayfertip Jr., Austin McCarl, and Davey Frenick. So um, that's it. And away we go. Here we are. And away we go. We will, uh, we will, uh, we will miss Pete Walton races before the year ends, and we'll go off the year long before he's done hosting races. <laughs> and then he'll add some. Oh, ex- oh, and to now, Danny Smith is driving. Oh, around. we yes. have a big announcement today. He delayed well, yes. the announcement. Yeah, delayed yeah. the announcement. Did see that? So uh, he's. I'll tell you, I'm scared that he's going to do it during this time period to take all our ratings. I wouldn't away. want to miss that new I scheme. I knew. I wouldn't want to miss that paint, new paint scheme. So we have that to look forward to as well. So, fun stuff. Hey, we need to step away. When we come back, Justin Fiedler, Dirt Tracker, dirttracker.com, Dirt Tracker Daily. We'll talk to Justin Fiedler next. Tony, do you even remember how to drive one of these? It's not something you forget. You should know that. The drive to succeed, the need to win, the desire to be a champion. And we surround ourselves with partners that believe the same. Like Tony Stewart Racing, Sage Stewart strives to be the best in all they do. They work hard on the farm, in the packing facilities, and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears all year long. You can compare apples to apples, but nothing compares to a Sage Fruit apple. Winning quality in every bite. My gosh, you have got to, okay, if you're listening on audio, and we love it, I'm, hey, I'm a radio guy, I'm MRN. If you're listening on audio, thank you very much. Love it. I listen to Spotify all the time. I, our first guest, I listen to his show. I never watch his show. I listen to it, okay? Um, but if you didn't see, there's a new Sage Fruit commercial with yeah. Donnie and Tony. If you saw it, you saw it, obviously. Uh, pretty cool stuff, that is for sure. So uh, appreciate it. Appreciate Sage Fruit being back with us again this year here on Wing Nation. Let's go to the Sage Fruit Hotline. Joining us, you can find his show Sunday through Thursday. Each day, the day, uh, the Dirt Tracker Daily, of course, his website, analytics, stats, news, notes, links to everything and anything on the planet. Justin Fiedler joins us. Hello, Justin. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? We are fantastic. So Aaron and I started the show <laughs> by bragging that we did not have to do shows from the first part of November to now. We loved it. You're a guy that did shows during that time period. This off season in sprint car racing, how do you how do you sum it up, Aaron, or how do you sum it up, J- uh, Justin? I mean, I don't know why you guys didn't do shows. There was so much stuff going on. There was Ugh. so much to talk about all, all off season. No, it was. I, I leave that to you. I'll leave that to you. Um, I'll leave that to you. I, I, I want to share this. I, I'll get your thoughts on it as far as that goes. We were at PRI. And ran into ran into you a couple times up there, Justin. And people are telling us everything. You're getting stories. I'm getting stories. Someone comes and runs to tell me something, and ten minutes later, you're down the hallway t- uh, talking to the same person. And I know you're getting it. And I'm thinking, poor Justin, he's got to do a show about this, and I don't have to talk about it until February. So let it all sort out, Justin. The 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 off season. How do you how do you sum it all up? Uh, very busy, a lot of moving parts, a lot of things changing, and 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 movers and shakers and and all kinds of stuff. But I think we're uh, I think we're at a good spot here. I think you know a lot of stuff has been settled out here in the last, especially the last couple of weeks. Um, and you know, finally this week we get to go sprint car racing. Yeah, seriously, Justin. I, I as well when we first came on the air today it was very transparent how you know when all this started to happen. High Limits announced their series, they announced their schedule, they p- drivers were going where, and there was just a lot of negative social media. I kind of just took a step back. I didn't have to do shows like like Steve said, but when you think about when we first saw these announcements and to where we are now, how have your thoughts maybe in general changed from maybe your initial thoughts of oh this could be good, bad, whatever you might have thought in the beginning adding another national series what are your thoughts now that you see there's excitement from both sides there's there's enough cars to go around what are your thoughts as the season's just about to begin 
Well, you know, I think there there were questions then. I, I honestly still think there are questions now, but I feel like, you know, both sides have got themselves in, in, into good positions. And, and I think this is just, you know, the, the reality that we need to, you know, be prepared for going forward that we just have two national sprint car series now. And it's, you know, it's like you see on the late model side with the word of outlaws and Lucas. Now we just have the word of outlaws on high limit on this side. Um, I think both sides can can very much continue to exist and, and coexist. Um, you know, how much cooperation happens between the two sides. I, I mean, that will be something, you know, to be seen into the future. But I think there's a lot of excitement on both sides. I think a lot of good things are happening on both sides. I like both fields. Um, you know, I think we're going to have, you know, a really great battle on the World of Outlaws side for the championship. And, you know, I've talked about it on my show you know, some of the stuff at the top of high limit. And, you know, one of my concerns, and, and you, you mentioned it there, was, you know, are we going to have enough cars here? And, and I actually did a show about, you know, where where did all of these cars come from? Because, you know, this isn't something we've seen before. And, and you know, we've got guys like Rico who've never run a tour before and now out, out full time. We've got guys who've been pick and choose like Brent Marks now out full time. We've got some newcomers, Tanner Thorson, um, and, you know, some of these guys that have, that have put deals together to come out again. And, and you know, I think there's – I think both fields are, are going to be good. I, I think it'll be interesting this week specifically because you're going to get a lot of high limit teams that are going to run at Dirk Car Nationals. And so, you know, things I think at Volusia will probably feel pretty normal, um, you know, for, for the number of teams and, and all the faces that we're going to see there. And then it'll be interesting to see, you know, going forward how, how both sides do, you know, in terms of car counts when they go various places. But, you know, so far I'm encouraged by both sides. I, I like some of the stuff that High Limit has done in terms of trying to change things and innovate a little bit. I, I think it's going to make World Racing Group and the Outlaws step up their game, and we've, we've already seen some of that too. But um, I, I know I'm, I'm excited to, to see some stuff, and I'm excited to see what both sides are able to do here. going to be fun, that's for sure. Justin, you're the perfect person to talk to with this, and you referenced it, okay? I am in the dirt late model world. I am fanboy. I love the dirt late models, but I but I, but I, I don't do anything in the sport other than just sit and watch races, and I love it. You, of course, that's part of your forte. What you cover, what are the are there are there parallels? Are there differences? Are there are, when you when you look at statistics, counts, numbers? Are there differences or concerns or anything between the late model with dueling national tours and what we have in the sprint car world now? Um, I, I think, you know, a, a big thing is, is you know, there is some level of cooperation on the late model side. You know, um, Rick Schwally with Lucas and, and Steve Francis with the Outlaws, they work together a lot on, on rules and, you know, they try to help each other out with the schedules. And, and I think eventually we need to get to that same place with the Sprint Car Series. Um, you know, right now, I, you know, I, I, they've, they've worked together at least on some stuff in terms of safety and, and some of the rules things I've heard about. But, you know, some of the other stuff, we, we just don't quite have cooperation on, uh, yet on. And, and I think we'll get there. I think it'll take a little bit of time for both sides to kind of figure out how this is all going to work. Um, but I think, you know, you, you're going to see, um, you know, a lot of the, you, like you see on the late model side, right? You've got the, the big events at Eldora, right? Your big crown jewel shows where you have everybody together. And, and we're going to have exactly that same thing on the sprint car side, right? When we go to Eldora for the Kings Royal, when we go to the Knoxville Nationals, we're going to still have everybody. And it's interesting. I've seen this, this idea pop up of like, oh, they should do like a joint high limit show. But it's like, you're going to get joint high limit outlaw shows all season yeah. at these big crown jewel races. And let's not forget too, that the, the outlaw guys, you know, they're under some restrictions, but they still have four races that they can run outside of the outlaw platform agreement so they can use those you know those freebies to go run some high limit shows as well so you're going to see those guys picking and choosing you know some of those more high paying high limit shows to come in like we saw david gravel do last year like we saw geo Selzy do you're still going to see that throughout the season so you know you're still going to get opportunities to to see everybody together but then you're also going to have these these chances to kind of see them split and, and who can do what they want on each side Absolutely. Justin, you mentioned that it's going to help maybe the the World of Outlaws step up their game a little bit. They have some competition now in town. You know, when this was all first announced and first started, I was a little bit more of a doomsday person, like, oh, this is not going to be good for the sport or whatever. But now I've I've seemed to already notice some minor upgrades, whether they had them planned or not. The media day looked a little bit different. Some of the announcements they have coming out. What are some of the good things you see coming out of this as far as the yeah, maybe healthy competition of, of making sure your making sure your shows are bigger or, or making sure you're attracting the fans? What do you see that it's going to do for the world of outlaws and for high limits to make their, their game a little bit better? I mean, you talked about Media Day, that was a big one. I you know, I, I certainly liked the presentation of all of that that we mm-hmm. saw from the World of Outlaws. 
Um, I would expect some things to change on the streaming side on both sides. I've heard some rumblings about some improvements to broadcast and maybe some added things coming in the future. Um, and I know, uh, you know, I talked about this last season, but the Word of Outlaws made and, and, and World Racing Group made a, a pretty significant hire, you know, in, in, in the area of streaming. Uh, you know, a guy they kind of brought over from, from the UFC side of things, and some, he's got some pretty big-time experience in terms of streaming. And I know that there are already kind of changes in the works on the Dirt Vision side. So I would expect some, some cool improvements on that side for this season season. Um, and then, you know, fan experience, those things are always going to be, you know, kind of at the forefront. You saw Highland announced yesterday their, their fan fest plans. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, I think both sides are going to, are going to push each other. I think they already have pushed each other. You know, you've seen purses raise on both sides, you know, bonus money, tow money, things like this are, are going to con- continue to, to get better as both sides kind of jockey and, and vibe for, for drivers and, and for fans. Um, but, but again, like I, I feel like there's a sentiment out there that one side is going to end up winning out, that you know one side is going to win, and I just don't think that's going to be the case. I think you're going to have, you know, both sides coexisting, and, and I think there's plenty of cars and plenty of space for that to happen. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, upstart, the High Limit Series, um, and and you've been pretty uh, pretty adamant on your Dirt Tracker Daily Show. Um, Brad Sweet is a tough competitor, uh, winning races and a points competitor. Um, what's your kind of assessment? Is it is it is it Brad versus the world? Does does someone like Rico or a Brent Marks or a, or a Sunshine or someone? What's kind of your assessment of what we're going to see at the top of the uh, High Limits Tour? I mean, Brad over the last several years. I mean, the, n- nobody it, it, nobody championship races like Brad does, right? Like Brad's going to win his races. The mm-hmm. Brad's the, the the reason that Brad wins championships is Brad is just going to top five you to death. And it's just hard to keep up with him when he's top fiving you to death all season. And I think because of that, um, he, he has to be the, the guy right now for high limit. I think he's definitely, you know, the one they're all going to be chasing. I do think Rico is, is right in the mix there, especially with what we saw last season. You know, Rico ran a lot of races last year. He won a lot of races last year. Um, he went down to Australia, had some success down in Australia. And, and you know, Ricky Warner and those guys, they're going to have Rico tuned up. Um, and, you know, Rico's going to, Rico was bummed out last year, right, that he didn't win the midweek championship. And, and I think, you know, if he doesn't have that flat tire to start the year at Lakeside, he, he might beat Kyle there for the championship. Only missed out by a couple of points. I think those guys are going to be really motivated to bring the fight there. And then, you know, behind that, you know, behind those top two, I do like that kind of next group then. You know, Brent Marks, Tyler Courtney. Uh, I think Corey Day could be in the mix there. Uh, Justin Pegg, Zeb Wise. Like, there's, there's a lot of talented young guys that are going to come up there and are, are going to try to make, for the, uh, make a name for themselves as well. I think Sunshine is an interesting one. He had a, a pretty hellacious season last year, even, yeah. even though he got injured. Um, had a lot of wins, a lot of top fives, and had a really strong run to the end with the Outlaws last year. I think you could see that team make a, 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 a significant step forward this year. Yeah. Justin, on the flip side, talk World of Outlaws with Brad, obviously not running for the championship there, leaves the door wide open, gravel, Macedo, you can never count Donnie out. What are your thoughts on the World of Outlaws? I think Gravel is the favorite. Um, you know, I, I've been saying for a couple of years now that I, I expect Macedo to, to win a championship one of these years. Um, he just wins too often. And, and I, I still don't think Philip Beats, his crew chief, gets enough credit for, for how mm. good he is at what he does. Um, so I really like that team. I, you know, I think, you know, Gravel Macedo, I think, are probably your top two over there. I really like the direction Gio Selzy is heading in. I, I actually interviewed Dominic, his brother, uh, over the offseason. And, and you know, Gio didn't, you know, he, I think he only had the one win last year, but very, very consistent. And like I just said with Brad on the other side, that consistency is what keeps you up in the mix there. I think Gio could definitely surprise some people this year. And, and then from there, you know, can Donnie come back and be the Donnie we know, right? Like we obviously know he hasn't forgotten how to drive. We, we, we saw that last year with some of his big wins. So can those guys kind of get some of that consistency back? Um, and then from there, you know, a guy like Buddy Kofoid, I, you know, is as talented as they come. Roth has all of the, uh, all of the support they need and, and all the resources they need for from Toyota. Can he jump up in there and be a championship contender? I'm like, I'm, I'm just, I'm excited really about both sides. There's so many guys to talk about. Really is yeah. cool. Yep, that is for sure. Fun stuff. Justin, um, we always talk when you come in and fill in for, for Aaron or Ashley along the way, we talk about your product there, Dirt Tracker, Dirt Tracker Daily, Dirt Tracker website. You've added another element to it. What are you doing? What's your plans with Rico with uh, the uh, video diaries or whatever? What do you got going on with Rico? So actually, I, I'm, it, this will be something really fun that I'm going to do this year. And, and I did one kind of uh, first around his Australia racing. We're going to do these kind of periodically throughout the season. Just check-ins with the team, right? 
you know, what have they been doing? How have they done? We're, you know, we're going to get, you know, opportunities to talk to the guys, to talk to Rico, to talk to Ricky Warner, his crew guys uh, in, um, um, you know, that are involved in that team as well. And I feel like, you know, trying to kind of bring fans behind the scenes with, with Rico, he's such an interesting guy and, you know, running his own operation and, you know, he's just so dang fast wherever he goes. Um, and, and I know he's a guy that has a lot of fan interest. He's, he's super fun to be around. He's super exciting when he's on the, on the racetrack. And I think it'll be really cool to kind of take fans behind the scenes of, of what his season looks like. And we're going to have photos and we're going to have video clips and, and, you know, all kinds of fun stuff, kind of like what you saw with that first edition that I, did, that I had done around the Western Australia Speed Week. But we're going to keep doing that all season. We're going to try some creative things and, and uh, hopefully give, give people a cool uh, kind of peek behind the scenes there with that team. Fun stuff, that is for sure, and good stuff that you do all the time with uh, Dirt Tracker. If you're not following along uh, YouTube, all the social platforms, go on there for your analytics. If you're playing at the Fantasy Racing, the analytics are outstanding there as well. And um, just keep keep on keeping on. Justin, we uh, appreciate you joining us and uh, kicking things off for us here this season on Wing Nation. Yep, I appreciate you guys having me. You guys have a good day. There we go. Justin Fiedler leading things off here on Wing Nation. He has carved out a tremendous niche yes. in the sport. He really, truly has done a wonderful job, and he has he has brought uh, this is it has been content sprint car racing podcasting has been fascinating yeah. to watch this go because it, when we started Wing Nation, uh, there was um, Hoseheads, TJ Slideways. Yeah. And I be racing, I think it oh, is. Yeah. Um, Brad Brown. And, yeah, Bra- yeah, Brad Brown. I think that was it. And then we started the podcast stuff, and there were other podcasts out there, but we kind of took it. Dirt Vision jumped in and and did their uh, their podcast. Uh, Justin and Ross did that for, yep. and they're they're still doing stuff. And now you know everybody is in here, and I think it's awesome. Yeah, because there is no way you and I could sit here for fifty hours a week. And not cover every sprint car story. Absolutely. And this is where I love what Justin is doing, Jeremy yep. Elliott's doing, the, everyone is doing out there. So kudos to Justin, and we do appreciate him joining us here to kick things off. We need to step away because when we come back, another one of our resident experts, Brad Doty, he joins us next. Tony, do you even remember how to drive one of these? It's not something you forget. You should know that. The drive to succeed, the need to win, the desire to be a champion. And we surround ourselves with partners that believe the same. Like Tony Stewart Racing, Sage Stewart strives to be the best in all they do. They work hard on the farm, in the packing facilities, and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears all year long. You can compare apples to apples, but nothing compares to a Sage Fruit apple. Winning quality in every bite. Some of the teams might argue they want you know a longer off season, but yeah, it's now that the season's starting up again. It seems like it's been a really short off season, and, and I'm excited, uh, very excited to uh, get things rolling this week. 
Brad, we just talked to Justin Fiedler and we kind of dissected the whole two national series and kind of went through some of that. I wanted to get your thoughts on it. You know, you've you've been around sprinter racing for a long time. You've seen these other national series try to start the USA sprints. So I can't even remember half of them. And a lot of them weren't successful. But this sure feels like this. the high limits is here to stay. What are your thoughts uh, just in general on the two series competing for the, for the national spotlight? Well, I was able to listen to part of, you know, with you and Justin, and 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 he he's doing a great thing with his show, and 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 those daily updates are really, really cool to keep up with things. And and I, I guess I'm kind of like you, Aaron, when this thing first announced. I heard you, you know, you say you were skeptical, mm-hmm. as as I was. I mean, we've seen two other rival series try and only last the season and go away. And you know, it seemed like a split. I don't think IndyCars ever recovered from their split, but it does seem like, um, as you and Justin both had talked about, you know, it seems like that both sides are maybe a little, little more willing to work with each other, which is a good thing. Um, I'm they they high limit. They've got some really good ideas, and competition's never a bad thing. Um, you know, the first thing that comes to my mind when this thing happened or the split was the all stars going away. That mm. that bothers me more than yeah. anything. Yep. The sprint cars need a feeder series. And now basically there is none. And for a lot of younger teams or you know, that they could run the all stars in a regional series, get used to traveling, get used to being in working on the car in the parking lot and living out of motels and mm. and that was kind of the, the next step to a national series. So that to me is the biggest loss with the split. But um, you know, like I said, they've got some good ideas, and 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 we'll see. I, you know, late the Lucas late models obviously in the world of outlaws have been two series, and there's plenty of cars, and and two sprint car series might survive. My biggest issue, I guess, is um, well, two things. The world of outlaws, obviously, the history's there. You hear a lot of drivers say they, you know, it's been their goal since they were, you know, childhood to win a World of Outlaws championship. So if High Limit sticks around and they make it, then, you know, down the road, that might be just as important. But, you know, the World of Outlaws has history to it. And, um, you know, we'll just see at the end. I, I just feel like even like in late model, in that late model world, as you guys both talked earlier, you and Justin, and, and uh, about, both sides getting together for the big event. So the fans do get to see everybody, but my question is, if there's only one series every night, the fans know that they're seeing the mm-hmm. best in the world. You know, mm-hmm. now now they got to pick and choose on where they go and where they spend their money, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, that that is that is the challenge. Uh, that is the. The, the question there where you were in the past, you knew that Brad, when, when were you, were you part, where, where were you at when, when those splits took place? Were you uh, in the middle of it? Where were you at when that was going on? Well, when the first happened with the uh, USA, it was basically about a year after I got hurt okay. after my injury. I thought so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I kind of got put in the middle of that. Um, I knew people, obviously I knew Ted and the World of Outlaws side, and I knew some people on the USA side and, 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 you know, kind of like now some of the people from the World of Outlaws got hired by USA and, and that kind of thing. And it's, it was always tough, you know, to, to uh, um, be in the middle of of all that. So I I guess I'm kind of lucky in a way that, you know, I'm I'm not a competitor at, mm. at any of these splits. You know, I'm just a a fan or or someone who's you know lucky to had a TV career, but didn't have to make those decisions on picking or choosing a side. Yeah. Brad, on the promotional side, you know, you obviously have your Brad Doty Classic every year, so you have some knowledge in this this part of it. The World of Outlaws have been producing races and promoting races for I, I forget how many years now, but the long history you talked about. High Limits had one year of midweek races, right? It was just one year. And we saw their car counts drop, really, as the season went on. When you look at what they have to do this year 
to to be at the level that they say they're going to be at. What do you see some of the challenges being? I mean, there's infrastructure that has to go to these races. They, they still have a lot to prove. You know, they, they, it sounds great on paper what they want to do and what we have coming up. But it seems to me that there's still a lot of unknowns on actually the, the production and, and how things will come off. Or, you know, the results will be. Yeah, as they say, time will tell, won't it? Um, mm-hmm. A lot of money being spent yeah. on their side, it looks like. And, you know, um, like I said, I got to be careful because I don't want to put down either side. But, you know, can that money continue? Uh, Are the results Mm going to be there? Is the streaming uh, audience going to be there that they're expecting and that kind of thing to to help push this thing along? So, you know, that that's the the big key, I guess, is, is, um, you know, hopefully it can continue. It, it you know it has raised the purses and in, in a lot of ways and the, and the fans you know um, well let me back that up you know as a promoter you know the purses have gone up on the World of Outlaw side and that comes out of our pocket as a promoter so you know we we we're fortunate we have some great sponsors and you know we can absorb some of that and but you know it's great for the racers. And as, if I was a driver, I would love it. As a promoter, you know, I question it, but uh, it is what it is. Yeah, absolutely. I want to go to the other extreme. Um, not the other extreme, per se, but another side of sprint car racing. Uh, we've talked about national tours and what that's going to do. Yesterday, or the day before, uh, Attica, which is the track mm-hmm. you partner with for your event, announced a purse mm-hmm. increase. And, and, yeah. and, Brad, this just blows my mind. Their purse alone on a weekly show. This is this is not a special. This is not this is a weekly show. Their purse alone twenty seven thousand mm-hmm. eight hundred dollars. Now that is nothing as far as insurance, nothing as far as payroll, nothing advertising, nothing lease, nothing no no profit or anything like that. The weekly pro and and, and Brad, there's a lot of this stuff. You probably know numbers and don't share anything you don't want to share with us. But um, I respect that. I respect your spot with us. But my gosh, they have got to rely on thirty five or forty thousand dollars to come in every Friday night at Attica just to make this work. What about what what what's your take on the week status of weekly shows and sprint cars? Well, first thing that comes to mind is the. The promoter uh, at Attica, John Boris, is is a huge race fan, yeah. and he he's always giving back. You know, even uh, you know b- before the Brad Doty Classic went back to Attica, um, you know uh, he he paid all the top ten or twelve in points their their membership to the World of Outlaws and. You know, and he's always trying to give back to the racers. And, uh, you know, the, the d- new director of operations, Justin Liskai, who's going to work with Rex Lejeune uh, next season to get his feet wet and stuff, they, they all got together and decided to, to up the purses. And, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's kind of scary for them that, that it takes a lot of money just to break even. Part of that, and, and, um, is I mentioned earlier about losing the All Stars. I mean, you guys both know because you're you're sprint car fans that you know a lot of the All Stars series ran in the Midwest with a lot of shows in Ohio. Yep. So losing the All Stars, even though it's not it's still not that feeder system that I spoke about earlier to for teams to travel and kind of get their feet wet there, is Ohio, Fremont, some of the tracks have or Attica and uh, Fremont, some of the tracks have decided to, you know, we put a lot of money in the all-star races and let's try to up the ante, so to speak, with our local local Friday nights and our have some big self-promoted big shows, non-sanctioned big shows, and still have uh, maybe get some teams to come in, even though it's a non-sanctioned event. You know, money brings cars and teams, and hopefully with the cars and teams brings the fans. Man, I'm telling you, that is, yeah. wow, that is that is a lot. That is for sure. The Brad Doty Classic, 
Can folks get tickets? Are we? Are, I know you're not watching the weather app. We'll talk to you later in the year about your weather. He's already app looking watching. at the almanac. We'll we'll we'll, we'll talk to you yeah. later in the year. But how are things progressing for your race coming up? Uh, coming up in July, Brad. Really, really well. Yeah, people can go to Attica tickets. Reserve tickets are on sale. They can go to AtticaRacewayPark.com or the World of Outlaws website and go through their schedule, sprint car schedule, and. Scroll down to, to July 16th at Attica and click on there and buy tickets. So, it, again, Attica Raceway Park, they're, they're available. They've been available for a while, and, and tickets are going well, and I'm really, really proud of that. But if I have time real quick, I want to go back to Aaron's question about, you know, all these teams and, and, and with high limit, they've got a huge roster. And, and, Aaron, you brought up about the weekly stuff, mm-hmm. the teams falling off toward the end. Yeah. That's going to be the interesting part. Right now, there's a ton of great talent signed up, but we'll see by June or July or when they start traveling further and further west how many teams stick it out kind yeah. of thing. And they know they, they know they're going to lose a few. So, you know, we'll see where they go. If they end up uh, pick and choose or they go back, maybe run the outlaws, that's going to be interesting come, say, around midsummer. Yeah. That's a really good point. That's a great point, actually. I uh, appreciate. Yeah, that's 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 good stuff. Yeah. I'm glad you doubled back. Even if back you think about, that. you yeah. know, Jacob and what happened last July, August, when people. Just well, yeah, see last it. July and August, yeah. everyone got got burned out too. Yeah. So we have that as well. Brad, it is yep. always a pleasure to catch up with you. Appreciate you taking some time with us and sharing your vast insight into the sport. And uh, we wish you well, and look forward to catching up with with, uh, with you at a racetrack coming up soon. Okay, one last thing, Steve. I have Amish neighbors that probably have TVs stashed in a corner somewhere, so it's about time you uh, get, get on a, get a TV. Brad, I'm rolling right into the 70s. I'm rolling right straight into the yeah. 70s, full speed ahead, you know? So, <laughs> exactly. Yep. I'll, up and running. I appreciate that. Thanks, Brad. <laughs> All right, thanks. Thanks, guys. You got it. Brad Doty, the great Brad Doty joining us here. The Attica thing really struck me as interesting. Yeah. Okay. In 19, it would have been the late 80s, maybe 90. I was working at Pencan Speedway where Ray Everham picked up a win in uh, in one of of Ray Everham's Grace Victory Lane. I was working for a guy named Seward Rice at Pencan Speedway. And he called me and says, meet me Tuesday night at Beaver's Diner. That's where we met. It was a little restaurant right there in Halstead, Pennsylvania. And he says to me, Steve, I want you to take over Pencan. Mm. And I'm like, woo, man, don't, you know. And so we chit-chatted about it and everything like that. He was going to go to the owner of the racetrack and say, this is what we're doing. We're not putting this out there. We're just going to announce Steve is taking over. Yeah. And, man, you want to talk about heartburn. I mean, you know. And I said, well, Ricey, what are you? And Ricey was an older guy. I says, what are you? Why? Why are you doing this? He said, Steve, every Friday night. I put $16,000 in a bag, and it's gone. Yeah. And I have to hope that $16,001 come in through the grandstands, through the pits, through the concession stands. And I'm just like, whoa, man, I'll tell you what you think about it. And he said, Steve, my house is paid for. My cars are paid for. I can live the rest of my life on one night, and every Friday night, I'm putting 16000 I can't do it anymore. Yeah. And I'm sitting there. Now, fast forward to this, and this is where this really struck me. 27 a again, it's got to be thirty-five dollars to $40,000 to, yeah. make, to make this to, work. To cut even, So yeah. every Friday night, John Bors and the gang at Attica is saying, $38,000, and I hope 38001 come back. Yeah. You know, Holy that cow. has been one thing I found interesting or, or I'm curious about is across the board in sprint car racing, the purses have been raised, which is like, he, like Brad yeah. said, if you're a driver, great. If you're a team owner, great. You're getting some money back. But where is this money coming from? Yeah. You know, is it, it it's the streaming, but doesn't sound like the streaming is really supplying. Uh, who knows? But I, yeah. I'm curious. Like you think about when he talked about Attica is like, yeah. man, that is a lot on the oh, on the track owners. Man. It's a weekly Friday night yeah. track. That's that's not that's not yeah. your Brad Doty classic or your I mean, man I'll tell you what yeah. and kudos to him uh, uh, Dave up at Atomic he he chimed in on some of my social media and he said yeah he says he, he says you're talking thirty to forty grand a night is yeah. what you're talking to run but run. you got to increase the purse if you want the people to come exactly so. it's like oh boy the key is go out and support your local racetrack go support them and while you're there buy a hot dog a box <laughs> of popcorn and a soda pop we need to step away more Wing Nation in just a moment. 
Tony, do you even remember how to drive one of these? It's not something you forget. You should know that. The drive to succeed, the need to win, the desire to be a champion. And we surround ourselves with partners that believe the same. Like Tony Stewart Racing, Sage Stewart strives to be the best in all they do. They work hard on the farm, in the packing facilities, and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears all year long. You can compare apples to apples, but nothing compares to a sage fruit apple. Winning quality in every bite. Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit, rolling along. We appreciate Justin Fiedler and Brad Doty joining us on the Sage Fruit Hotline. Always like to take time and nod to the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum. Yesterday would have been the birthday of Ted Johnson, Mike Arthur. Today, Speedy uh, Ralph Speedy Helm, Larry Sullivan, Bill White, Jimmy Oski, Gene Lynch, Alex Morales, Jan Opperman, Fred Offenheiser coming up. But want to take this time to talk about the Sprint Car Hall of Fame and their upcoming Class of 34 induction. Aaron, what a great, great class they have for the National Sprint they Car really Hall of do. Fame and Museum. Drivers, Tracy Hine, 91 overall wins in USAC, a triple crown winner. Don Stambro, 191 sprint car wins, one of the true outlaw yeah. drivers. And our buddy, Paul McMahon, 21 World of Outlaw wins, two-time short track nationals. Really cool to see Paul McMahon. See, see that trio of drivers. The trio. All in. three yes. of them are so deserving. It was neat to see the social media around it. You know, I could tell from Paul's tweets how excited he was, and then Jan, and just the whole, really, the sprint car community was... Everyone was so excited for Paul. He's such a great guy. Yeah, he really is. He's just one of our he's just one of our great ambassadors of the sport. Yep. And uh had a chance to catch up with Paul at PRI uh briefly and chat with him and he just is he just is always the same and that's great. Just yep. always good. When we talk about owners, Greg or owners mechanic builders, Greg Deuce Terrell, he is a longtime mechanic. Mm -hmm. Man, this guy, do yeah. you did you know? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Deuce to help our sprint cars back in upstate New York, Ohio. Yeah. Wow. Gosh, that's awesome. And uh, some guy named Ricky Warner, boy, we could go on and on about yeah, this guy. he has a few accomplishments. Yes, he does. Absolutely amazing. I didn't realize this, that uh, your husband hired Ricky at one time and went NASCAR racing with He him. did, yeah. Actually, when I first signed with Ray and, and did some bush racing and ARCA racing, he was the crew chief on the, the bush car that we had. It wow. It was uh, the Hungry Helpers. It was the whole thing with Unilever and Casey yeah. Kane. But yeah, Ricky was on that car when I first moved down here. That is neat. Neat stuff. So Ricky Warner. Promoter Officials Media, Mark Bones Borsier and Bill Holder. You uh, did you ever cross paths with either of those guys? Bones for sure, and yeah. still am friends with him on social media and love his updates and his. But yes, it, it, both again very deserving. Yeah, Bones, he's just great. Yeah. I didn't realize this. I was reading his bio that we both started with Gator Racing News. Oh wow! That yeah. was how both of us got started. We used with to Gator get the Racing old Gator News. Racing News love, back in the gotta day. Gotta get a Gator. Gotta get a Gator. And pre nineteen seventy, Roy Robbins. First Knoxville Nationals winner, won at 11 different states in the 50s and 60s, and was just a great, great race car driver. So that induction ceremony will be Saturday, June 1st. Saturday, June 1st at the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum. One sprint car place, Knoxville, Iowa. Aaron, the wait is over. I mean, <laughs> we are ready to go. We had, we. I mean, and, and again, I yep. started the show. I saw some Chili Bowl. I saw some uh, some Australia. Pete Walton's been racing, but it is And time. I did see Ashley Stremme's husband picked up a gator. Yes, Ashley Stremme. Yes, yeah. exactly. David picked up a gator. Yeah. How about that? Little yep. Steel got himself a gator. Steel got himself a gator. Yes, absolutely. So kudos to Ashley and David. They're down there running their modified all this week. Yep. And then she'll be here next week with you. Yep. Because I'll be in the air headed, yep. headed on that way. Ladies' one. Day. Yes, Ladies' Day. Here we go. Batting down the hatches. All right. <laughs> World of All and NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars season opener. They're gator hunting down there at Volusia, the Dirt Car Nationals. It starts tomorrow night, although they do have testing and practice tonight. Wednesday through Friday, $12,000 to win. Saturday, twenty grand to win. The reigning champ, Logan Schuhart. And Schuhart could be tough this year as well. Mm -hmm. He's going to be awesome. You can follow it all on Dirt Vision. It is really, really going to be good. It's going to be so great to have Dirt Vision on. I am so pumped about this. Yes, me too. Oh, man. I scheduled something last night at 8.30. For <laughs> tomorrow night at 8.30. <laughs> What an idiot. Plans are off. Well, I'll just mute the TV and do it. Okay. A <laughs> podcast, which is cool. It's a, it's a, good, it's a, it's a neat thing. Uh, high limits. They start next week. The battle at the Bay at East Bay. Monday night, $10,000 to win. And Tuesday night, fifteen grand to win. Flow Racing is where that's at. And East Bay, it's been rumored for the last 15 years, but I do believe 
this is the end this year. Oh, okay. I do believe this is the end this year of East Bay. So, uh, so, so we have uh, Wednesday through Thursday of the Outlaws, and Monday and Tuesday of uh, on Flow Racing of the High Limits. Um, USCS is at Southern Raceway in Milton, Florida, and the Top Gun Series is in Clewiston, Florida, at High, uh, Henry County Speedway. So there you have it. There it is. Woo! We're Day one go. in the books. We will have race-winning drivers next week. You will have race-winning drivers yes. next week. You and Ashley will be here next week. Uh, going to have fun. But um, it's going to be an exciting season. So, again, you can follow along on all our social channels, Twitter, Facebook. Facebook, we have a page and a group. And you can follow along with either or both of those. And then YouTube is probably where everything ultimately is going to end up going. I mean, it, it's going to be Facebook. It's going to be wingnation.com. It's going to be all the platforms. But YouTube will have, I think, yeah. everything we're doing across the board. So going to be a fun season, that is for sure. And can't wait. Can't wait. Always good. Yep. Good Always to good be to back. You. Favorite time of the week. There you have it. She's Aaron Evernham. I'm Steve Post. Thanks for joining us this time on Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit.